Hi, it's Ama and I'm back with another video and I just want to say two things really quickly. Um, this video is going to be part of a four part series of why it's hard to leave. Um, I'm thinking three parts, four parts, but um, the three parts are definitely the reasons that it's hard to leave is uh, isolation, codependency, and financial, right? Financial abuse or the way that the finances are actually used to kind of keep you in a situation with the narcissist. So in this first part of the three part or four part series, I'm going to be talking about codependency. Okay. And why it's so hard to leave the narcissist or why it's so hard to go no contact and keep no contact. I mean, especially if you don't have children, if you do have children, then no contact really isn't um, an option for you too much. More of a gray rock is option option for you. But this video is going to be talking about why it's so hard to leave codependency. So come and take a walk with me on this journey of healing and let's talk about it together. Okay, so I wanted to really deal with why it's so hard to leave because I wanted to make this video to let you know that even though I make these videos, it's not easy for me. It's not easy. There are times where I sit back and like I said in other videos, I'll miss the narcissist. There are times where um, I actually um, start to think about my life and my future and get really <laughs> nervous and afraid. But I'll talk about what that is because as you also know, I, I talk often about being a recovering codependent. And <clears throat> uh, when you are codependent, it's hard to leave the narcissist because codependents lack the ability to self-soothe. And so what does that mean? Codependents tend to, we tend to give others our emotional baggage um, so that we don't have to deal with it, right? We tend to kind of expect other people to be in our lives to, 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 to take on um, our emotions and things of that nature <clears throat> because oftentimes it's very difficult for us to deal with and so codependents have a tendency of doing that and so when I say uh, codependents lack the ability to self-soothe if you notice sometimes as a codependent you may go through something you know and you can't wait to call somebody and tell them because codependents always need validation Codependents always need someone to soothe them, tell them it's going to be okay, to, right? So we can kind of fall into their arms and feel like we're being taken care of emotionally, right? Because sometimes we're almost emotional cripples. And even if you are the empath like I am and you're, it's so easy for you to give love and give compassion, sometimes it's hard for the codependent to really turn around and give that to themselves, Right? Codependents oftentimes make themselves last. And so when I say a codependent lacks the ability to self-soothe and why it's so hard to leave <clears throat> the narcissist is because codependents also suffer from pathological loneliness. And when I talk about pathological loneliness, pathological loneliness is an irrational fear of being alone, right? And so this oftentimes, if you're also a codependent, like I'm talking about, you will notice that you stay in relationships much longer than you need to because of the fear of being alone. And it may not necessarily come across consciously as a fear of being alone, but codependents tend to relationship hop. So basically you're leaving one relationship, and you're already engaging in another, you never give yourself time and space to heal. You just kind of hop from one relationship to the next. And I'm guilty of that. You know, I've been in <clears throat> relationships since I was 17 years old. I've never been single. 
it was basically from one boyfriend to the next to the next till I got married to the to the to the to the narc to the right and so um we we suffer from pathological loneliness and when i talk about pathological loneliness it also shows up in the form which i just said which is an irrational fear so i'll give you a quick example of what that is because i never want to make these videos and make you think that i've got it all together and i've got all the answers i struggle just like you right i struggle to make it through this journey of self-healing and so I'll tell you what that looks like. I remember one night I was on the phone with my girlfriend and we were about to get off the phone and she goes, have you seen, she said my ex-husband's name, have you seen his Facebook page? And I said, no, because I'm normally not on Facebook. And she goes, yeah, he's at some restaurant with this woman and they, post, they posted a picture together. So I was like, oh, all right. So when I got off the phone with her, I, of course, looked looked at the picture right when i finished looking at that picture right because i must be a masochist right i then went to the ex narc's uh, facebook page and on his page he had a picture of you know this beautiful woman wearing one of his shirts um that he sells on his website he actually gave me the same shirt i just never wore it right because i'll tell the truth it was ugly it, it was ugly and I, I didn't like it but i would have worn it to support him but to make a long story short so she was wearing the shirt that i never wore right so i guess that was another way for him to be like screw you right but i'll tell you what happened because of the pathological loneliness I closed down the computer and I literally, I lost it. I started bawling and bawling and bawling and bawling and bawling and almost to a point where I was hyperventilating. And before I judged myself, I just let myself cry and I cried and I cried and I cried because what was coming up in me was the irrational fear that I was gonna die all alone. I'm looking and I'm saying, well, look, my ex-husband is moving on with this beautiful woman. The ex-narc is moving on with this beautiful woman. What about me? Like, I'm going to live a life of solitude, loneliness, and I'm never going to find my joy. I'm never going to find my peace. I'm never going to find my soulmate. I'm never going to be happy in a relationship. All these irrational fears started flooding my mind instantly. And I got my journal and I just started writing and I just started writing and I just started writing. And by the next morning, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I felt 100% better, <clears throat> but I felt better that I was able to identify the feeling. And oftentimes that is what codependents wrestle with and that is what is hard for us. And that's why it's so hard to leave the narcissist because codependents don't want to be alone. They don't. They don't, but it is so important to take time after a relationship, especially a relationship with a narcissist, to kind of recalibrate, right? Remember who you were before you were in a relationship because you oftentimes give so much of yourself and there's so much compromise and there's so much concession that takes place in a relationship that you won't even recognize yourself, right? And so it's important to actually take some time get to remember who you were and and honestly get comfortable with your aloneness right you see me rocking i just i did that so get oh get okay with your aloneness get okay with your alone time understand that being alone doesn't necessarily mean being lonely and so while it's very hard to leave the narcissist because of codependency, it can be done. And like I said in so many videos, oftentimes when you really identify this, it's not about the narcissist. It's really about you, right? And for myself as an example, the codependent and my inability to soothe myself, to self-soothe and the pathological loneliness. And I had to deal with that head on. I had to deal with it head on, right? I couldn't run back to my ex-husband. I couldn't run back to the ex-narc. I had to sit in that feeling. I had to work through it. I had to cry over it. And I had to understand that someday, I don't know when, 
But someday when I'm doing what I love and I'm doing what I'm passionate about, the person that I love will show up in my life. When I'm loving life, I will find the love of my life, if that makes sense. When I get busy loving life and seeing it for the blessing that it is, I will find the love of my life. And I can't rush that process. And I can't look to see what my ex-husband is doing. And I can't look to see what the ex-narc is doing and trying to keep up. Right? That's their process. And I have my own. And so in the first part of this series, um, I just wanted to talk about um, why it's hard to leave as a codependent. I also wanted to say thank you so much. A thousand subscribers. Like... I'm just pleased this punch and I could not tell you thank you enough and I really want to say from the bottom of my heart thank you all for taking the time to watch and when you comment thank you so much so if you haven't subscribed please subscribe hit the subscribe button now if um this video resonates with you please click the like button so that more people can see it and have access to it and as always please comment below sometimes it may take me a day or two or three to get to the comments but i am always reading them and i am always trying to respond forgive me sometimes um i have to go to work and i have two small children so i may not always necessarily be able to get to it immediately but i will so again please subscribe and thank you so much thanks for taking this walk with me and until next time take care mm -hmm.